Good morning, India. Good evening, American. Welcome to the 20th edition of Dialogue with Experts. And we are welcoming the viewers through YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Today, we have a very eminent guest, Mr. Aravind Kyagarajan, a serial inventor and an entrepreneur. He is basically an Indian with the Indian passport holder, but he is uh, having his company at California and Silicon Valley, and he is one of the successful uh, entrepreneurs and inventors. For his credit, he has more than 100 patents in his name, probably one of the very few people in India having so much of a patent in his name. Probably I used to make fun of him like a hobby, like taking a coffee. He used to have a, a invention and registering his patent. Today he is with us and he has also recently launched a new product, Healthy You. Because of the COVID situation, many of us are uh, afraid of many of our uh, body temperature, body pressure and the oxygen level all in one and uh, we will also uh, recently has yes, launched last week and uh, it is I, uh, I used to always say Aravind Jagarajan is always the India's pride and neighbors envy and uh, really welcome Aravind and we are really proud of you you are making a, a very Indian proud at the Silicon Valley. Let Thank me start <laughs> uh, let me uh, and another one important thing that he was mentored by Dr. Yepi Abdul Kalam uh, uh, for his uh, inventions. Let me start with the first question. Uh, Aravind, what is invention and innovation? Because there are two things, because many times people get confused. confused. And uh, innovation, we call it as an innovation index, and we call it as an inventor. What exactly the difference between invention and innovation? Sure. First of all, uh, good morning to everyone from India, and uh, good evening to everyone from US, and uh, wishing you all a very happy and healthy New Year. And uh, before I answer this question, uh, if you don't mind, I wanted to first uh, thank uh, Srinivas sir for organizing this. And uh, more than anything else, I want to really thank uh, my mentor, and I can probably say Srinivas sir's mentor too, uh, none other than our former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam ji, for actually being the reason for our common connection with Srinivas sir. And we have had so many meetings with uh, Kalam ji together and uh, really thank him for where I am today. And uh, if not for his words and his inspiration, we all would not be here. So, so that's why I really wanted to have Kalamji, you know, talking through all of us today. And hopefully this can inspire a few youngsters watching this program, just like how, you know, we all got inspired uh, in our university and college days watching Dr. Kalam, uh, you know, and his inspiring words. So, so answering your question um, on the invention and innovation side. So if you Google the difference between invention and innovation, it'll tell you that invention is a fundamental discovery, right? Whereas innovation is an improvement. Just like how the Apple iPod was not an uh, invention. It was an innovation because there were other iPods and audio players beforehand, but an improvement that Steve Jobs and the team did was really a remarkable innovation and that changed the music industry forever. Whereas a fundamental invention is like a, a light bulb or a fundamental breakthrough invention. That is the invention. So uh, both are good, both are much needed. It's all about solving the problems or improving the performance. Various aspects are important. So I think all of that, if it can solve the problem or make things better for a customer or for a user, it is very relevant. Now, in India, many times people, uh, students, I, I, even uh, many of the professors used to say, uh, why our, uh, your boys are not going for invention? They used to say, this facility is not available. That's what they we are always looking at what is not available. But whereas in the early 2000, you were with Anna University, and uh, even from the, I know that you are from the college, they said the, the available, even 20 years back, even much more, uh, less facilities were available for uh, very enterprising students like you. At that time, how the students, now a lot of changes have happened. How do you suggest the students, young students and professors uh, can be part of uh, invention and the innovation probably also with sure. the available infrastructure available in India with available things instead of blaming the entire system that is not available, this is not available. There are many things are available. Sure. 
So just to share a little bit of uh, my story on how I started on this innovation path, they always say necessity is the mother of invention. In my case, my mother was a necessity for my invention because when I was a child, I was detected with a heart problem uh, in, and I was actually required to go through annual echocardiograms. And obviously my parents felt a lot of stress and anxiety and uh, my mother was very worried about it. But uh, thankfully I didn't need a surgery. It actually got rectified automatically. And uh, seeing how much anxious they were, I actually wanted to become a doctor in life. And despite scoring 99% in all the core subjects, I ended up reluctantly going into an engineering college at Chandra University, even though a very prestigious university at that time, 175 years old, and one of the most respected universities in Asia. But still, I was a little disappointed that I couldn't become a doctor. And that's when I was fortunate uh, to hear Dr. Kalam's inspiring words that he said, Arvind, if you're a doctor, you can help thousands of patients. But if you're a doctor's doctor, solving their problems with technology, you can not only help thousands of doctors, but through them reach millions of patients. And that's how I started working in this field of developing some technologies that can help doctors in detecting better at an early stage and so on. And even though I was working in this field, I didn't really at that time have aspirations to you know, pursue this innovation path or find, file a patent or a, you know, have a company started and things like that. It was a coincidence in some ways because uh, you talk about challenges and so on. In the year uh, 2000, 2001, it was the year of 9-11. So a lot of economic changes happened worldwide. And one of my job offers from my college days was actually delayed by six months. And while I was trying to apply for university in the US and so on, there were also obviously funding requirements for getting aid and other things in the US. And that's where I was kind of thinking, what should I be doing despite, I mean, with the delay in my joining date from the company. And uh, then Dr. Kalam suggested that why don't you file a, a patent you know, for your uh, technology and pursue developing that further? And we didn't really know much about a word called patent those days, right? We had heard of you, heard of publications and things like that, but what is really a patent? And then Kalamji actually organized um, a patent awareness seminar in Gindi Engineering College that year. And some of the leading controllers and deputy controllers of patents of the in, in Indian Patent Office, they came and created this awareness seminar. And with that, we were actually then aware of how to actually go about filing a patent and things like that. And it's not that hard at all. All the resources are available. Um, I mean, those days we didn't have much internet, but all the resources are available in the patent office. We could avail that and then file a patent. And that patent that I filed ended up being the difference because with my subsequent investor, they were actually looking at a criteria of IP-based investments. Whereas a lot of companies at that time in India were IT companies, not IP companies. So they actually found me, and even though I was a 20-year-old, they actually found me and gave me a million dollars to start my company. That's how I started my career. So thanks to Kalamji's advice and his inspiration that you know I started this entrepreneurial journey. So to answer your question, yes, there are some initial challenges. And nowadays, it's much, much better because of internet. There is enough information available. You just need to be aware that, first of all, you want to pursue this uh, journey of uh, inventing things or innovating and uh, you know for looking at an entrepreneurial path you know filing a patent that awareness needs to be in place and with that inspiration and interest there is enough information available and you could actually research that and file a patent it's very easy from there on now what is the suggestion that you gave now that you talked about the patent how the students can go for a patent? Now, today, I find in the Facebook and uh, Twitter, many of the students, they do a lot of things in their colleges with a project. Maybe even maybe a small project also. Certain time, it may work the patenting. How do you suggest uh, many of the professors and uh, students may be watching this show? How do you mm -hmm. suggest they can go for a patent? How, sure. how tedious it is or how easy it is? Yes, I think the fundamental requirement there is how uh, patentable, how how much of an invention it is, right? Uh, just by adding a few different things, you cannot claim that it is a new product or a new idea and you can patent it. But there has to be a fundamentally uh, different idea that is not uh, easy for a, for a common person to think of, right? That is the patentability. And again, there are some criterions and as part of that, you can do some patent search and find out if there are other prior art 
for this and based on this you can actually file a patent or of course if you are not aware of this process you can actually get some help from the patent office as well as there are a lot of patent attorneys and so on and each university may themselves have a, a patent council of sorts and uh, you could actually get help from there but if you believe that your idea is fundamentally different and unique whether you are right or wrong it's better to file a patent anyway because it's not about who invents first it's about really who files first right so you have to file everything in time to claim the priority of that and that is very important there is a whole process and again that is actually a much needed skill set that students as well as entrepreneurs and uh, you know young uh, professionals need to actually be aware of because that is your fundamental right that if you want to protect your invention or innovation you need to actually file a patent first and it's very easy you need not have a lot of uh, structure and other things you can even just do a very basic provisional patent first and then you can improve upon it after which there is a, a time frame available upon which you can do a complete specification or a, a global patent for a pct based thing which can go into multiple countries so that's a a whole art and science of patenting but without going into too much details at a high level i think you just need to make a decision and do it quickly and uh, and then of course as needed you can get the professional help required and the whole costly many times the people are fearing that it is a very highly uh, cumbersome and time consuming and costly uh, yeah. what do you feel about that it is actually not that expensive if you want to protect your idea and so on those days uh, it used to be about 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees in india i don't know the exact figure right now but even in the us it's actually a few hundred dollars or less than 1000 dollars and so on so uh, i mean it's something that gives you the right to claim ownership to your invention so it's definitely worth the investment and as i said you don't have to do a complete uh, specification or a pcts to start with you can even start with a very basic provisional patent that should do right yeah. who, who are the uh, any uh, 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 um, anybody giving a support or guidance on this in india to your knowledge or at the global level for such uh, enterprising students yes so as i said uh, each university will have a patent office hopefully and that should give some guidance if not uh, there are enough patent attorneys uh, in india nowadays as well as worldwide but i think the first step i would suggest is going online and looking at the the relevant sites whether it's uh, world international patent office wipo site or any other relevant sites that uh, has enough information there and then you can educate yourself nowadays with internet and various other resources available uh, and that should be a good start and if we need professional help then there are enough patent attorneys and so on and at, at some point in the near future we are also thinking of setting up a framework for you know young students uh, to actually avail such mentoring for patenting and pursuing their entrepreneurial dreams so that is something we are definitely planning in the coming weeks and months to come so yeah and now in spite of all this our uh, traditionally india has been a, a great reservoir of knowledge even from vedic days even 5000 years ago and all we have been the source of knowledge for mathematics astronomy astrology siddha ayurveda but see, we don't find uh, many of the nobel laureates here or uh, our innovation index is uh, hardly it is 48 i think it has improved from 52 to 48 why there is uh, is it lack of awareness we have a lot of knowledge people like you are there in us and uh, today microsoft or take the google or adobe or many beginning companies uh, in the world level or uh, man or headed by indians and uh, uh, what what went wrong why it is uh, happening like this you are in the yeah. california and the silicon valley and you must be knowing yes so i think there are few reasons for this uh, to start with um, i think what kind of journey somebody wants to pursue whether do you want to pursue uh, a product path which requires patent protection and all those innovation aspects or is it just a service or a solution and so on right now lot of uh, indian entrepreneurs and companies are more on the software side of things but it doesn't mean some of the software aspects cannot be patented some unique architectures and business ideas and other things can also be patented in different geographies 
so it's just that that awareness needs to be there now i'll i'll give this uh, exercise to every one of you if you're interested go to google and do a search of number of patents by country in each year and you will be shocked to see the results in 2019 and 2020 i don't want to reveal the figures but if you compare india between usa and china we are far behind now india was 52nd in the world innovation index last year and this year it has climbed up by four points to 48 but in terms of the number of patents filed and number of patents granted way ahead the other countries are and that is actually a bit of an economic warfare that's going on right and unfortunately due to lack of awareness i think we are lagging behind it's not that innovation is not happening in fact a lot of innovation is happening and recently i was actually part of some um, entrepreneurial uh, forums and so on and a lot of entrepreneurs from india came and presented i was pleasantly surprised to see how many software solutions cloud architectures cyber security aspects so many improvements coming from india but that aspect of patenting it and owning those rights and from there on productizing it and exporting that whether it's a hardware or a software doesn't matter but that is what is going to be key for the economic upliftment of the country and this is what dr kalam was emphasizing on right for the economic development you need to have your own products your own innovations and solutions mm-hmm. and by exporting that's when you're going to really go really big and of course there is a lot of software export happening but in terms of software also there could be certain modules that we develop as a service component right that is important but for us to have a unique aspect and control over these things and really have an economic upliftment we need lot more innovation and lot more protection of that innovation so that awareness somehow has to go as part of the educational curriculum so that students are aware of it like if you apply for some of the top universities in the us they ask you how many publications and patents you have and at that time you can't be thinking hey what is a patent you know so that is an awareness which is much much needed at at grassroots level in fact i would go to the extent of saying even at school level right students should file patents like there is a beautiful program here in the us called stem research program and so on and lot of school children are given this opportunity to think innovatively and come up with their own solutions for problems and as i said before necessity is really the mother of solution think of problems and think of unique ways how you can solve those problems that's where we can truly impart real education because otherwise it's just bookish knowledge you can just mug it up and reproduce in the exams you can get great marks but from a practical applicability point of view children will be lagging behind right so that's where we need to inspire them with that interest of how to solve the problem and then they will be really passionate and interested in solving the problem or creating some unique ways and then from there on begins the innovation path and with patents and pursuing that as an entrepreneur and things like that happens i really agree with you. i really agree with you arvind that uh, even the not only the patents it is also the publication of uh, research papers i find uh, many of the uh, uh, scientific institutions engineering institutions so they lack uh, many times uh, uh, even the publications of not in a highly rated uh, publication this is also i think probably is a lack in the it say it is a lack of awareness probably uh, prime point foundation and uh, uh, your organization books and some more organization in silicon valley can work together and probably we can think of some uh, uh, a new model uh, for the future and now i am coming to entrepreneur now uh, not only the product now the many of the people whether with innovation or without innovation many of the people students uh, complain about the unemployment they don't become an entrepreneur and uh, what do you feel how they can become an entrepreneur how they have to face the challenges because many of them feel that the challenges are more and uh, with innovation or without innovation the entrepreneurship also is very important sure so i mean definitely it is a challenging path it's much easier to join a company and get a monthly salary life is easy right you can uh, get married buy fine i mean build a new house buy a car whatever it's much easier life I'm not saying no but with good things that you want to do there are a lot of challenges right and uh, especially the entrepreneurial path is not a 
a cakewalk. You have to have that conviction. You have to really have the belief in what you're trying to do, you know, what you're trying to solve. What is the difference that you're trying to make to the world? For example, in our case, you know, we are trying to solve this problem of cardiovascular diseases that is killing millions of people worldwide every year. So that gives us that inspiration and passion to really, you know, go at it every day and then really drive the solutions and adoption and things like that. So that, that passion is what really drives and uh, challenges are always there. In fact, one of my good friends, he's a very well-known um, entrepreneur, used to joke to me, there are only two very happy days in an entrepreneur's life. One is the day you start your company and the other is the day you sell your company, right? Those are the two happy days. And apart from that, everything else is challenging, right? There are more and more problems, more and more challenges, but these are really opportunities that if you can solve, that definitely gives you the unique uh, edge over your competitor. But more than the competitor, it's really about your customer and uh, really getting happy customers and solving their problems and making a difference. That is the key, right? And you have to really believe in the idea and you have to persist. And, uh, you know, that's the way to do it. I know you are uh, one of the products, earlier uh, product, uh, that is uh, Visco. Now I think you have renamed it and remodeled that, which uh, uh, Dr. Kalam also has uh, given you a lot of uh, appreciation. I think that has solved many of the Tamil Nadu's, uh, uh, the poor people, uh, cardiac problems. So probably thousands of or millions of uh, uh, poor people, patients have saved. Probably that will give you happiness as an entrepreneur. Is it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, that's why I was uh, thinking about the, the title, Successful Inventor and Entrepreneur. I mean, success means different things to different people, right? Success is what other people think about you, but really the satisfaction is what you have for yourself. And from a satisfaction point of view, uh, I would really be happy and proud to state that with our device, we have saved the lives of so many people, including thousands of children, right? We have already screened now more than 35,000 children with our earlier device and with our new device that was just launched a year ago, we have already screened more than uh, 60,000 children. And more recently, despite the COVID situation, uh, we are looking at screening about 100,000 children, which will eventually scale it up to almost 500,000 children, which will be one of the largest ever uh, screening programs done ever in the world. And the reason being, there are almost 300,000 children born every year with congenital heart defects. And out of which almost uh, 90,000 of them don't even survive until their first birthday. So per day, almost 250 to 300 children are dying. And that's almost a national emergency. And today that problem is an unmet need because stethoscopes, conventional stethoscopes alone are not good enough because some of the, the healthcare workers are not as well trained as doctors and they find it very difficult to pick up those cardiac defects at the field level. And you also cannot use the ultrasound echocardiograms because of various regulations like the PNDT Act and so on in India, you cannot use an ultrasound echo on the field. So because of these restrictions, there is uh, really a, a challenge. And that's where our device came in, in terms of uh, really helping these uh, healthcare workers, non-specialist doctors with a, with a intelligent stethoscope, which connects to an app and then it kind of, uh, you know, looks at the, the heart sounds, ECG in real time. And if there are any abnormalities, it shows immediately. So it's almost like a spot check. Even a very basic healthcare worker can look at this and then find out the difference between a normal or abnormal case and then refer that child or a patient for a follow-up care. So with that, we have actually screened several thousands of children out of which a few hundred children have been shortlisted and sent to the hospital for a follow-up care with an ultrasound echocardiogram and so on. And they were actually detected with the heart problem. And thankfully they were given either a free surgery with the rotary like institutions, organizations, or even some of the nonprofit hospitals that I'm also involved with from a nonprofit side, they provided free heart surgeries. And in the process, almost a few hundred children actually have been saved. Their lives have been saved. Now, what is the value of that? That is truly priceless. That's what I tell our team every day. It really gives us so much purpose in what we do. The why we do is really most important in terms of what we do, right? So that is what an entrepreneur should really care for. And that by itself is enough passion. You don't have to have somebody else coming and inspiring you and telling you what to do, how to do, and so on. This is what 
really gives us that much needed inspiration. As Dr. Kalam always says, a dream is not something you have in your sleep, right? A dream is something that will really not let you sleep. You know, you have to really think about it, breathe, live, and, you know, really dedicate your life towards that. And that's kind of the kind of work that uh, we are involved in. And we believe more, you know, youngsters can be involved in. And uh, with that, they can really become the true heroes that the society needs. You know, these kind of inventions can really solve the social problems and so on. So that's, that's kind of is the exciting path. So despite the challenges, this exciting path is really, really what keeps you going. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Really inspiring. That's why I started my conversation with you are a pride of India. Now, I think we were, we were, viewers may get justified that for my statement. Now, can I have a demo of that particular product which uh, you have uh, recently launched that has helped? Do you have it? Do you have sure. it? I, have it. I have the device with me. So let me show you the first device that we launched a year yes. ago. So this is the intelligent uh, stethoscope with integrated ECG leads. You can see the, the three golden dots with the ECG leads. If you want, I can show it in the slides too. But that's a stethoscope for the doctors. But uh, more recently, we have this week actually at CES show, uh, which was virtual this year, we have actually launched uh, the world's first all-in-one integrated patient monitor device called Healthy You. It's a very small device, uh, six centimeter by six centimeter, and it literally fits into your pocket. And then that can detect multiple parameters in addition to heart sounds, lung sounds, it has got a seven lead ECG and various other parameters. So if you like, I can uh, quickly- Do you have that, do you have that device now? Yes, so I'm gonna share that right now. So real quick. Uh, uh, so as I said, there are 18 million people almost dying every year with congenital, I mean, with cardiovascular diseases worldwide and almost 2000 Americans die every day, right? And there are a lot of challenges with auscultation and these uh, sophisticated tests like ECG and echocardiograms are not done routinely unless symptoms show up. And the problem is when symptoms show up, you're not with your clinician. And when you're with your clinician, the symptoms don't show up, right? So that is the classic challenge. So that's where we solve this problem. Uh, we're trying to solve it in two phases. Phase one is for the physicians where this intelligent stethoscope with this ECG leads. So no wires, no gel is required. And it pairs with the smartphone or a tab. You can see the ECG in green color, heart sounds in blue color, and then any abnormalities can also be shown uh, with our AI algorithms and so on. And this product was FDA cleared last year in July, 2020. In fact, we are the only stethoscope uh, which got all these three product codes are cleared by FDA. And uh, so now the second part of the solution is for the home patient. This Healthy U device is an intelligent all-in-one remote patient monitoring device. And I mean, COVID pandemic has taught us how challenging it is in these times to have a physical appointment with a, a clinician. So that's where this device can be used at a home even by a grandma without training, right? So that's how easy it is. No need to connect any wires, no patches required, no cuff required, nothing, right? It's a small device that you can literally hold in your hand. And uh, this is how it looks like. So it literally fits in, into your hand. And then um, on the screen, you can actually see all these parameters. We have heart rate, and then 7 lead ECG will be shown on the app, pulse oximetry, temperature, stethoscope, blood pressure, and even respiration rate. I mean, what kind of monitoring you have in an ICU in the hospital that level of monitoring you can have in your pocket. That's how powerful this technology is. So we believe this can make a huge difference, not only during the pandemic times, but also beyond, right? So it is, it is very, very helpful. So- Is it, uh, is it available in India or uh, you know, still you are yet to uh, produce in India? So we just announced it and launched it at the CES uh, show in the US here. And uh, in the next coming weeks and months, it will definitely be available uh, in multiple geographies. Uh, India definitely will be one of them. And uh, we are also awaiting the US FDA approval for this device for us to start selling it in the US by second quarter or third quarter of 2021. Uh, but in the meantime, we are already starting a lot of clinical pilots and evaluations under IRB protocol. Uh, that FDA has allowed, you know, to do. But uh, definitely India, unfortunately, has become number one in cardiovascular diseases worldwide. So, so we actually definitely want to address this, just like how this congenital heart defects use case is something, you know, that uh, we were made aware of much later and we felt like we really need to help with this and we need to solve this problem. 
right? And uh, so we prioritized on uh, the congenital heart defects in India for screening children, but now equally important is the adult screening also, screening and triaging. And um, so especially having this device available in remote locations where you won't find an actual clinician and so on and connecting it even over a Zoom meeting like this, right? You just have to have the, the software and then uh, and the device, and then you can even connect it over a Zoom meeting. Um, and if, if you're interested, we can show you that also, but um, uh, definitely this is something which will become available uh, very soon. Uh, will it be affordable price for Indians for average? Yes. yes, definitely. We want to make it really affordable and we are coming up with some very unique models where rather than patients having to just buy it, for a few thousand rupees or a few hundred dollars and things like that. It could even become a subscription kind of a model where you almost pay, just like how you know more and more people in India and definitely a lot more in the US are paying for a Netflix subscription every month, right? For watching movies, same way, why not a health subscription? I mean, who would have thought of buying a pulse oximeter device before the pandemic? Even having a thermometer was a rarity, let alone blood pressure, right? But during the pandemic, everybody is rushing to buy a a pulse oximeter, just to see if their oxygen saturation is good enough or not. So same way, in some ways, the pandemic has become an accelerator for such unique technologies and innovations and really solving problems. And we believe even after the pandemic, right, if you want to meet your doctor sitting at home, you can either connect through our HD medical platform, cloud platform, or you can connect through a Zoom meeting like this and, uh, and share your screen and show to your doctor a seven lead ECG in real time. Okay, and that is unheard of. You cannot have seven lead ECG without connecting wires and, and uh, patches and things like that. But in our case, without any of that, seven lead ECG, and you can even move this device from all the vector leads from V1 to V6, and you eventually you can get a 12 lead ECG too, right? So that makes a huge difference for patients who are already suffering from heart problems and so on. Or sometimes if you suddenly have a uneasy feeling, you don't know whether is it a gastric problem or is it really a cardiac problem, right? So for that, it can become truly life-saving. Excellent, excellent. Now we are having a large number of people on watching on the social media, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. Some of the people are putting their question. I request Nandini, one of our uh, team members, to come on screen and read out the questions, whatever she has. Yes. Sure. Uh, hi, Arvind. Uh, hi. There's a question by Girish Chandrasekhar. He's asking, as students, we have many new ideas, but we don't know if such ideas actually would work. How to start off with a fresh project and go about finding whether our idea is even workable in the first place? That's a good question. And uh, of course, um, see, any idea can be dismissed that it won't work, right? We all know the famous story about cell, I mean, uh, uh, telephone, right? Somebody said, you know, hardly you can sell three or four and same way with the cars and things like that. There are so many examples that it's very easy to dismiss an idea, but I think that's where there is a process to it. Of course, you can implement it as a prototype and see if it works, if there is feasibility and so on. And then talk to a domain expert in this field. For example, in our case, you know, even before we go on developing a product, we talk to some of the customers like doctors and ask them if, you know, what is the real problem? I think the, 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 the problem and solution fit is very important. So the product market fit, they call it, right? And that is really important. And once you have really found the problem and then you know, you have to come up with a solution and then it's very easy to determine whether it will work or not. A lot of times as technologies, we tend to get very excited coming up with a very unique solution without having, without having identified that problem. So it's almost like putting the cart before the horse, right? That's where in Stanford's and several other leading institutions, there is a course, whether it's bio design course or product development course, where they really talk about finding the problem first and then coming up with their solution. You should ask why, why you are doing rather than what you're doing, right? Once you find that problem and then coming up with a solution and at the first attempt, the solution may not work, but it's good to implement it as a prototype, try it and then make improvements, trial and error, right? And then having your customer involved, like in, in our case, a doctor involved. See, I'll give you a classic example for making this uh, stethoscope device. As good engineers, we thought louder the sound, better it is. Right, as a normal engineer. But when we showed it to doctors, they said, no, this is too loud. I don't like it. 
We asked why, because we realized they were trained with rubber tube stethoscopes and that has a very soft sound. So they are used to that kind of soft sound. And when you amplify it too much, it becomes like a Diwali cracker in their ear and they don't like it, right? So you have to make it soft and nice and same level as they are trained. That is an art more than a science. You have to do multiple trial and error to make it happen. And then the noise surrounding it, it has to be suppressed. So, so many such small, small nuances that you need to perfect. But I suggest one thing to you know, fresh starters. This is an 80-20 rule, we call it. You can do 80% of your product development with 20% of resources. And if it works as a prototype, once you've established the feasibility, then the balance 20% of the product actually requires 80% of work to perfect it, to document it, to pursue it, and so on, right? So it takes a lot of work from a bench top to a bedside product, in our case, for a medical world. And it's true for every other product, even if it's a software code, anybody can come up with a quick app or a basic program today. I mean, school children are coming up with apps, right? So it's very easy to do that. But taking that into a product well-tested and all those aspects covered takes a lot of work. So that's why the 80-20 rule is a good thing that you can have in mind. And based on that, you can pursue this. Yeah, awesome. Yes, sir, one minute. So to supplement, uh, Mr. Aravind, uh, we uh, recently, last year, we wrote a cover story in our e-magazine, Presents, uh, about this innovation and all. At the time, we made a study with all the college students and college professors. At the time, uh, they never, the problem solution approach was not there. They have a ready made uh, uh, problems which uh, comfortably which they can do that and they earn more marks, 80%, 90% marks. But I asked them, why not you go to the doctors or any of the industries and find out solution, find their problem and then find a solution. They don't, many of them, they don't do that. Many of them, they don't do that. That's what yes. I agree correct, with you. Correct. That is and, and probably that is also one of the reasons we don't get uh, more patents there because we have a, only a ready-made uh, problems and ready-made solutions. Because uh, already- if I, may also add, if I may also <laughs> add, uh, in addition to finding the problem, we have to figure out how big is that problem? And that will answer the question of what is the market size? And that is a key aspect. A lot of young inventors and technologists miss out, right? And those are the things in US people are really good at. Any VC, any investor you go and talk to, they ask you these three questions. What is your um, Tam, Sam, and Som? And first time when I came across that, it's like, what is this Tam, Sam, and Som? TAM is total available market, right? And SAM is service addressable market. And then SOM is your share of market, right? So what is your total opportunity? Out of which, what are the specific aspects that you can cover? And then within that cover, what do you think you can achieve as your percentage, right? So these are all very well thought of structured concepts that our young inventors, whether it's from India or anywhere in the world, should become aware of. So that way, they don't make mistakes. I mean, the only way to avoid mistakes, as they say, is to have experience. And the only way to have experience is to make mistakes, right? So a lot of people have learned it the hard way. So there is enough information available so people can take advantage of that and make it much easier for them. Really excellent. Really excellent. Uh, yeah. yeah. Again, awesome. Continue. Yes, uh, this is a question by Joshua Ezekiel. He's asking, was there any time your patent was challenged as plagiarism? How do we know that our innovation or invention is new? If you happen to invest something like that, are you committing a crime? Not really. I mean, you can, worst case, right? If you file a patent uh, without doing any prior art search and the patent examiner at the time of examination of the patent they will find that somebody has already patented it, then they might reject your claim. Or they may ask for clarification, how does it compare with this such and such patent and so on. But that's where it's useful to do a prior art search and do a patent feasibility, which even home users can just do it out of a Google search or internet search. There are enough patent databases available, you can do a quick search. Or if you think it is, it is really important and it's serious enough that you want to hire a patent attorney, they can help you with this prior art search and things like that. There is enough information available. It, it's become a very sophisticated science rather than not right now. And the people do it really well nowadays. So yes, there is a risk, but you know the risk reward equation in this case is very obvious, right? I mean, uh, a few thousand rupees or a few hundred dollars that you spend 
But if it works, then this could become a few million dollars or a billion dollar opportunity, right? So it is better to actually protect it, better play it safe than sorry. All right. Thank you. Uh, now there is another question by Check12 Mate. He's asking, is it possible to share the failure that may be associated with the healthy U product? And what did you do to overcome them and make the product at this stage? That is bring the product to this stage. We're still bringing it out. <laughs> we say, I mean, uh, uh, we actually got our FDA approval for our current stethoscope device in July. And uh, we were busy getting it get up for manufacturing and various other aspects. But because of the pandemic reasons, we really prioritized on accelerating the Healthy You product since July. So it's only about six months old. Any baby requires nine months. So hopefully in the next three months, we should have the product out. And But yes, there are a lot of challenges always, right? Integrating all these sensors into a small little device and making it really, really easy without training. There are a lot of challenges. I wouldn't say we are 100% done on all of that. In fact, uh, we're uh, making a lot of progress, evolving it and so on. But as we showcase this to doctors, then they come up with a wish list of another half a dozen sensors to add. Like a lot of times people ask, hey, what about blood glucose? Can you add sugar? Can you add this? Can you add that? Right. So definitely as a roadmap, we will be looking at all of that too. But even with the current sensors, I mean, if you look at the industry today, uh, the stethoscope itself, we have actually taken the auscultation level to a completely new paradigm shift and doctors love our sound quality and so on. But if you look at the ECG, that's another totally different domain where uh, if you look at Apple watches and various other devices, they actually have a single EDCG. And with that single EDCG, of course, they can detect arrhythmias, AFibs, and so many other good things. It creates a lot of good awareness for the home user. But in this case of a a heart uh, monitoring, you know, more views you have on the heart, the better it is. Ideally, you should have all the 12 leads to look at 12 different views of the heart. But in our case, we have seven leads. And seven leads is unheard of without connecting wires or putting patches, things like that. So that seven lead, we believe, could be a game changer. So solving that took a you know, good amount of time and a lot of work, but uh, it's, it's, it's a constant progressing aspect if we are evolving this and then a lot of other sensors too. Same way blood pressure without cuff, having the blood pressure from the leads, from the sensors. It's another completely new paradigm shift. So all these unique aspects uh, we're working on as we speak. So definitely we'll be announcing the launch dates very soon and uh, looking forward to more lives being saved with this device both during the pandemic and beyond. Yes. Okay. There's a question by Karthik Raghavendran. He's asking for my healthcare startup in India. When should I approach the strategy of going global? That is how, how he should go about it. He wants to know. Sure. That's an important question. When you say global, it doesn't mean you should target every country almost immediately, right? You'll have to plan your geographic rollout based on resources available, based on expertise available. So if uh, your initial company is located in India, for example, then India itself is a huge market. But nowadays it's become easier from India if it's a software product to go to US. Another country has become much more straightforward and there are no geographic restrictions. If it's an online play, you set it up on a cloud, it becomes global totally. But, but it's more important to go for depth of penetration than really expanding your reach of your different territories and so on. So that's where... Uh, we call it, you know, we don't want to boil the ocean, right? We want to be more focused and really stay within certain areas that you believe you have the key resources and strengths available and then executing that. And once it is successful in one market or one region, for example, then it becomes a cookie cutter model. You can replicate it in multiple uh, geographies. And that's what some of the top American corporations are really, really good at. They show the success, they go for depth, and then it's a cookie cutter model with the process established, they can replicate it very successfully. Then it's all about scaling. I think the starting point, we don't want to worry about scaling. I think the most important thing is the, the product market fit, figuring that out and making sure your initial customers are happy. And then based on that, really looking at the scaling up plans. And that's again in another area where a lot of resources available, mentors are available to help with that expansion plans and so on. Awesome. Thank you. Last question. Last question. 
Yes. Uh, what can Indian entrepreneurs learn from the Valley in terms of innovation and skill? So I'll say this in the Valley failure is a badge of honor. Okay. People are very proud that they tried and they failed. And that mindset has to definitely come in. You can't hit a billion dollar company with your first approach, first invention, first company, and so on. You got to try several times. You got to persist. Right. And that's very, very important. But getting the right team members involved, right mentors involved, but most importantly, really looking at what problems you are solving. Are there other people who have solved it? And what are their shortcomings? And how can you solve it better? Doing that bit of homework and planning is very, very important. That's where Silicon Valley luckily has that right ecosystem, whether it's the universities or the VCs or other entrepreneurs, fellow entrepreneurs, that whole ecosystem really exists. And people don't mind failing at all. They want to try, right? And, and those are the cultural aspects that we need to get. Unfortunately, sometimes if you start a company and if you fail, then people will brand you as a failed entrepreneur and things like that. And we have to shy away from those kind of negative mindsets. We have to really stay positive. End of the day, what really matters is, are you helping making a difference in this world? Whether it means saving a child, saving a patient, or you know, improving in, a, let's say, an online education system in these COVID times. So many children are deprived of going to school. Can you come up with a better solution for that? Like this, there are enough problems in this world to solve, right? You have to pick that one problem, stay focused, and, and really execute. I mean, part of it is innovation. The other big part of it is execution and making things happen. Because that's a totally different topic, but uh, that's equally important, if not more. All right. Thank you, Arvind. Great. Uh, I request Srinivas Gopal to come on screen. Uh, Mr. Srinivas Gopal uh, is a technical, uh, Nandini, you can stay back on the screen. Uh, uh, Srinivas Gopal is the uh, technical person behind the uh, show and uh, he, uh, he is responsible for a good streaming. In fact, uh, uh, Arvind, uh, we are really, really, really honored to have you in our show. Really, it has helped a lot of today. Uh, we are not able to cover all the questions. A lot of uh, questions are pouring in the social media, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. But due to paucity of time, we are not able to uh, take it forward. And uh, I hope you are coming to India shortly. Sure. We also, Subject. God uh, willing, I, COVID willing, <laughs> come to India. Uh, soon. I, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, from, yeah. um, from out of our uh, from the conversation, probably now I'm thinking uh, this program is uh, uh, produced by Prime Point Foundation, e magazine presents, and the next gen political leaders. Probably we can think of some instituting a, an award for the young uh, people who, for the first time, you are, uh, and who are going for innovation and uh, for uh, invention. Probably we seek your guidance, we seek your uh, partnership also, probably. Both of us, uh, Prime Point Foundation and uh, uh, your organization can work together on that to establish uh, an mm -hmm. award. Also. Mm -hmm. Just like we are giving an award for Outstanding Parliamentarian, Sandur Ratna Award, probably we can uh, uh, sure. have a fantastic sure. award. Uh, probably this is one of the areas where India needs uh, more awareness and encouragement. And sure, really definitely. We are, yeah. uh, we are grateful to you for your wonderful uh, conversation. And uh, I'm thankful to our team, Nandini and uh, Srinivas Gopal, for their wonderful backup support. Thank and we also thank all the viewers on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And uh, please, uh, 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 please uh, click the subscribe button in the YouTube, and you will be getting the uh, kind of regular uh, updates there. And uh, we request you all to kindly share this link for the, with the students who might not have the opportunity of. Uh, watching that and uh, thank you very much wish you all a very 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 happy uh, shankarandi and happy new year and a happy time thank you very much Shankarandi. thank you so much thank again best wishes to everyone thank you thank you thank you